Hi everyone, today we're going to be trying to close out what I'm calling phase one and move into phase two. Hi everyone and welcome to the channel about kit cars and other car topics. If you like what you see, please subscribe and hit the notification buttons below and share with others on social media. So I haven't done some work on the car in a little while and I've been kind of, I don't want to say be feeling guilty, but kind of worried that if I don't keep it in my head that, you know, the momentum is going to start losing and, you know, I'm going to lose my place and kind of, you know, have to re-up and, and get back into it. And uh, so last night it was kind of interesting because I was like, all right, let me get my to-do list out. Let me get the manual, see what's coming down the pike. You know, what, what could I accomplish, uh, you know, working on the car today? And it was kind of funny because there wasn't a lot of stuff to do because I'm either waiting on parts or I'm waiting on this or waiting on that. And I kind of realized that we're really heading into phase two. And phase two is, you know, dry fitting the engine in, seeing where stuff's going to go on the firewall before I drill holes like, you know, dipsticks and reservoirs and uh, fuel regulators and things like that. And over the last you know, week, I've been kind of doing a lot of research because I'm like, well, do I own a few regulator? Was that in the packages that I bought or do I have to go buy that? You know, um, I had to go uh, definitely get the dipsticks that I wanted for the trans and the engine. And my transmission is almost here and I'll have a video on that when it comes through. Um, so it's just like little nuances and stuff that I have to get all together uh, before I could pop this in and kind of dry fit stuff. The other thing that I had to order, which was kind of a big purchase, and I was kind of waiting, I don't want to say till last second, but till I really knew all the components that were going together, and that was the uh, wiring for my engine. So the original wiring, when I bought my engine, I got like a complete engine with all the wiring and everything, and I sold that off, and I got brand new PSI wiring, uh, which is really great stuff, and dialed into my specifications of what I needed to fit to my CPU, uh, whether or not I'm gonna have uh, cruise control, things like that. All that stuff, you tack on these little things. And I also opted for the, what I'll call show car uh, wrapping that goes on the outside of the wire. So it's not just the uh, PVC type pipe uh, that protects the wire. So in the next few weeks, I believe I'll be popping this engine in and kind of seeing where everything fits. Uh, I'll have to double check whether I have to move my power steering unit to get out of the way. Uh, I do have one of the shallowest oil pans that you could buy for an LS engine already on the engine. So hopefully that it helps clear the power steering components. And then as we move into phase two, you know, not only are we going to be doing the engine and where stuff's mounting and all that stuff, but it's time to start quasi permanently installing some of the panels. Now, for me, you know, I am gonna be doing some lizard skin. I'm also gonna be doing some Raptor, uh, basically bed liner or undercoating, if you will. And what's cool about the Raptor stuff is you could actually color, uh, color it, tint it to whatever you want. And so I'm gonna actually tint it to the color of the car and have that on the underside of the car. Now, the one thing I don't wanna do, and this is even true with the lizard skin, is I'm not interested in putting all my panels in the car, permanently you know, installing them, and then splattering this stuff all over the place. That's not how I'm gonna be doing stuff. And that's also true with the undercoating. What I would like to do is have it pimped out and pre-sprayed, so when you lay it in the car, you have that offset from the actual frame to the color of the panels, which means I'm gonna to have to mask certain things off, and I'll also have to seal things a little bit differently than someone would normally when they're just splattering this stuff all over which is not that big of a deal. On the inside of the car, you know, using silicone or any kind of uh, sealant, if you will, uh, no one's gonna see that stuff, so it doesn't matter. On the other underside of the car, uh, I'm probably just gonna spray a certain way to where when I lay these panels in, it's kinda, kinda locking into the frame and, uh, and then going from there. And so it'll be really clean, very show car looking. Uh, so that's kinda the point of what I'm going at. But, all that stuff kind of starts to have to happen now so I can actually start piecing it together because there's dry time and between layers and all that. 
And finally, uh, my rear brake calipers are actually coming in. I saw this very heavy uh, tracking number, you know, with a heavy weight on it, and that's the only thing left that's coming down uh, that's been back ordered. So I'm really excited about actually spraying those. And so I think, you know, the next iteration of a bunch of spraying is actually going to happen. And I'm going to try to do all that stuff here at the house. Now that I understand how to use these guns and spray a certain way, um, I should be able to tackle that right here at the house. So in my little downtime, I've also been ordering and kind of preparing for the next phase. And so I got a bunch of stuff in. It's kind of like Christmas, except that I paid for all of it. So the first thing I have is my transmission dipstick. This is made by Locar. Uh, they make them in what I believe is polished aluminum, if that's what they call it. Uh, but they also have black and they have some other, they might have some other colors, but I think those are the two main colors. Uh, really nice stuff, braided hose. It looks really beautiful. So I'm gonna have to mount this on the firewall, but uh, Locar makes some great stuff. And then the next thing I got, I had to find it at a different vendor, was a matching uh, engine dipstick. So uh, this one mounts a little differently, but uh, just beautiful, beautiful stuff. The other thing I ordered online is actually this VHT epoxy paint in satin black. Satin black, I actually found it locally once. I had to drive to like four or five stores. I finally found it. And uh, I drove back to all those stores because I couldn't remember which one I bought it at and none of them had it anymore. So I was probably the guy that bought the last two uh, satins that probably were on the shelf for the last year that they couldn't get rid of. And so no one has it anymore. So I have to actually buy this online. Uh, it matches the car frame pretty well. Um, I mean, it's, it's not perfect, but it's, it's really, really close. And this is a VHT SP652 satin black. And uh, this is a special epoxy paint. Now you can find the flat and other things, but I wanted to go with the epoxy because that way I don't have to primer stuff first. It could go direct to metal. Uh, you wait 48 hours and then you're good to go. And then the next thing I have is what's called like an LS install kit for my auto meter gauges. I guess with the LS engine, things are a little different than the normal Ford engines. So you have to buy this little kit, it makes your life easier and your gauges work the way they should. And lastly, we have our wiring and it comes with this amazing keychain. Got some manuals and stickers, brochures. This is our woven kind of show car kit. It almost looks exactly like the, uh, the braided weave on the uh, dipsticks. Got some extra uh, clips. I had to, uh, oh, this is a switch. I had to actually order this because I had to use an LS3 map sensor on the back end of my air intake, my Holly air intake. And so they actually had this adapter there, so I just bought it all at once so I know it all worked. And here is my engine harness. It's a nice Ziploc bag, I'll show it to you. But as you can see, everything comes in that kind of PVC uh, coating. And so using that braided line that's going to cover all this takes an hour or so to install all that on top of this, but I think it's going to be well worth it, make the car look amazing. So originally I'll probably wire it all up as is, do all the dry fitment, and then once I'm done with all that, pull it back all off, you know, paint the firewall, get everything pimped out, and then put on the, uh, the show car braiding so it doesn't get any dust or any crazy stuff on it from, you know, doing the body work or something like that. And again, don't forget about the keychain. Well, let's hop to it. Let's try to close out phase one.
All right, so as you can see, we got the brake line in. I have it nice and floating away from the frame. Same thing here, here. I need to add one here and here, but then uh, there's one there. Goes into our junction box, our T, and then it comes around. And then I did the same thing through here. Floating. Get this out of here. All right. Uh, floating across the whole bottom and then comes around, locks into here. Then we'll have a nice braided line that comes out to our actual brakes. So we are good to go. I was <laughs> getting ready to do this stuff and I didn't have this uh, angle. And uh, my neighbor came over here and he's like, you know, I bought one of those angle things and uh, I've never used it. Is that something you could use? I'm like, uh, yeah. He's like, let me bring it over. Sure enough, I needed it right away when I started this and I didn't know it. Mainly because of this bracket here, just got in a way where I couldn't really get in there. This one was not a big deal, but over here, I just couldn't do it. There's too much stuff in the way. So this actually worked out really well. And uh, you know, I don't have to buy a whole new drill for this, just this little adapter, so that's great. So one of the hardest sections that you have to deal with is the front brake lines. There's so many little intricate things going on. So we have a little uh, T going on there. And then you have this bent up bracket that needs to go from here all the way up to there. Then on the other side, we have to go from here, which is going into this thing. And then it comes all the way around to the other side, to the other output. And so, we're going to try to get this and figure it all out, but it's pretty tight. So I painted the fuel filter a few days ago because I wanted to make sure it was cured. And now that it's cured, I'm going to go ahead and install it underneath the gas tank. Well, I feel like phase one is wrapped up and I can't wait to go to stage two, which is gonna be part of the engine install and some of the wiring and things like that. So it seems like most of the physical structure on the outside is all taken care of. So stay tuned until next time. Have a great day.